welcome back with Brian. Thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Brian. I am showcasing my K1 visa with my fiance that lives in Thailand and Bangkok. And I want to provide all the latest updates of doing a K1 visa. Uh, going forward, folks, um, this video is all for entertainment purpose only. I am not a K1 visa advisor. I don't work for immigrations. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, all the things I provide is all from research, from um, what I looked at. And then also I get a little couple um, inside tips when it comes to my friends that works for immigration so I can provide that to you folks going forward. But this video guys is going to be something I want to talk about but I figure I didn't know if it's going to be the right topic but maybe it can be but it also can help you as well too. But this guys this video is going to be talking about uh, wedding plans and also like on a certain K1 visa budget when it comes to wedding plans. So I thought this would be a good kind of idea to talk about like if you guys are planning for a wedding on a K1 visa, should you do a small or large wedding? So it all depends on you, but um, I was personally, this is from my, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So it all up, it's all up to you how you wanna do your kind of side wedding, but I kind of wanna do a wedding where it's gonna be a medium sized wedding, but just recently I changed the whole entire uh, wedding uh, plans from my fiance to um, how I wanna deal with going forward. And this is gonna be perfect because this is gonna help us save and budget even better. So original idea was we're gonna have a medium sized wedding and I was gonna invite up between 50 to 60 people for our wedding with close family and friends. We're gonna have a beautiful ceremony, a beautiful ballroom. And I was talking over with my sister and I said, hey, was it worth it doing something like that for your wedding when you had like a well, 100 or more? And you know what my sister said? She said that she regrets it and then if she had to go back in time, she would have done a smaller wedding, totally different on a very money budget. So when she said that, it got me thinking like, maybe I can change things around, switch a couple vendors in order to make it easier for us. So this is pretty much what I'm doing. And maybe if you wanna do exactly the same thing, this can actually help you with your budget. So what I did was I pretty much, I had to cancel most of my vendors and just to get a refund back depending like what I'm going to be changing going forward. So what I did was I researched in Hawaii and maybe you can do this in whichever state you're going to be married in. You can do a wedding package that if a vendor um, does special promo package of um, setting up an officiant have a venue that is gonna be uh, specified of where, what they can provide. You know, it can be garden, ocean. But if it comes with all these different kind of stuff that's inside a package, like the efficient, the venue, does it come with a limousine? Does it come with a bouquet? Does it come with a package of picture taking, videography? Um, does it have a, um, a communication with a coordinator when it comes to that? that's going to help you because you literally like eliminate spending videography, a photographer, a venue, and like, you know, specific, you know, if you're going to be doing a ballroom with like friends and family and that's cost, that's budget, you know, that you're talking about uh, food that's going to be per head. Like if you're going to be spending per person, per head of your buffet, that could be from 75 to a hundred dollars. That's not including, you know, drinks, you know, let's just say people want to drinks in your family. That's going to add up more budget at the same time too. And don't forget, you got to tackle on like, you know, fees, the taxes, um, the service charge. So it adds up more and more and you're going to be spending, spending. You think you're going to be under budget, but you're going to be over budget. So what I did was I actually contacted this particular vendor it's called wedding of hawaii based in hawaii and what they provided is they provided this package that it has everything that i wanted which is thank god it was very reasonable 
and they included a photographer that does for one hour. It comes a videographer that does videographing of the ceremony and they put all these highlights included. It includes a bouquet for my bride. It includes a um, processing of making sure my certificate goes right after filing for the wedding. It does have a beach and island look of a venue, which I want to get married in front of like a beautiful ocean in Hawaii with a scenery that's beautiful and nice on the sunset. And it includes, um, what else does it include? It includes like a special Hawaiian lei as well too. And I eliminated a couple of things because I didn't, I didn't need like a limousine and a couple of things like add-on, digital, um, resolution when it comes to like photos no i don't i didn't need all of that so i came for a perfect price because i got everything in one particular package and then i still hired my uh, friend that can definitely help you if you know any friends or family that can do like hair and makeup for your bride that's gonna save you cost and budget so i hired my friend to do um hair and makeup for my fiance my two sisters and my mom you know, so that works out perfect. Uh, when it comes to like flower arrangement, I had all these flower arrangements that was gonna be for the ballroom from the wedding of the ceremony and they were supposed to do a repurpose to put from the ceremony to the banquet room. I eliminated all that. Like that's, that's like saving me so much money. Like all I wanted was buying, not buying, but like getting the boutonniere for the men, for me and my groomsmen. I want to get like a uh, bridesmaid's flowers, which is like we negotiated the price even lower. And I didn't need a bride bouquet because the package that I ordered comes with a bouquet. So from there, my price just literally went from being so high and they dropped it. So I don't have to pay too much and I'm gonna get a refund from that. Like. So once I did the ceremony um, package that I want to get, I was thinking like where I'm gonna have my reception. And this got me thinking guys, this should help you. Now, this is how I did it. I am going to invite only immediate family and a few friends. And I'm talking about 20 tops. And I was gonna plan on having it at a beautiful restaurant that's gonna have buffet and that's gonna be the highlight of the evening. So I'm gonna be inviting my mom, my dad, my sisters. I'm gonna invite um, my good friends in California and then my two good friends in Hawaii. And that is it, like that is my list guys. I didn't even have to go to further inviting my other aunties, my uncles, my other grandma, my grandma, because guys, this is a wedding. It's a one-time wedding, yes, it's the most important day of your lives. I Don't get me wrong, I, I really believe in that. But if you guys are coming to a budget and you guys um, can't handle it, and you know, let's just say your fiance is not making enough money, you know, he has to support you, and you know, you're worrying about like, oh, you want to have the extravagant, you want to like post all these pictures, and you want to make it glamorous. Guys, th this is not the time. It's, it's pretty much, you know, just make it as much special as possible and save because maybe down the road, once you get married and you have a simple re reception, like a dinner, like what I'm doing, let's just say a year from now, you can also redo your vows. You can send out invitation to redo your vows and have it at another bar when you guys are all saving and your fiance is working officially now. And it's gonna set you up even better to you know save up for your honeymoon and um, getting your green card to travel internationally on trips as well so that's my plan um, so with everything that I was about to do my budget was and I can be real with you guys I've been so honest with you folks my budget was 20,000 seriously guys my budget was 20,000 now my budget is cut down to at least under five thousand that's how much i'm saving with doing a beautiful ceremony still but having a simple dinner reception with close friends and family and do i feel guilty not buying anyone else no i don't because this moment is for you and your fiance for me and my fiance so 
if, as long as your fiance agrees and you guys are compromised and if this is something that you want to work on, do it. This is perfect because it's going to help you save so much money in the long run and you can always do your revows and redo your original plan of having a nice beautiful reception in a ballroom you can do your first dance you can definitely do your cake cutting you can definitely do a dj that you guys can dance throughout the night i mean whenever that happens you know in the future you can plan for that but for me as long as i'm having dinner with my close family and this is our moment and as long as I can do a small dance in whichever room, private dining room that they're giving us, and I give my thank you speech and everything from my fiance and I, we are, we are good. That's exactly what we want. And we can call it a night, we can end early, and then we can just relax the next day and saying that, hey, we officially got married and did it simple, and it's gonna be the best moment of the highlight. But, that's pretty much what I want to explain to you guys. So that's how much my budget went from here to here. And I hope this video will shed some light and some uh, peace in mind that a wedding is um, a wedding is special and it all depends on your folks budget. Maybe you guys want to do a large wedding or medium sized wedding if you guys are have the money. But you know, for people who are working two jobs, three jobs and you know you're trying to save and it's just you don't know how to do the budget and everything do it simple guys like this is what i'm going to be doing now i really thought about it and this is going to help me and my fiance and we agreed we said this is perfect and then we told our family they agreed so we're now on board so it's all about you and your fiance try not to impress anyone because it's only for one night and you're gonna be doing a wedding for only for six hours. And from my sisters and their experience, they had a big wedding before and they really regretted it because they spent so much. And by the time they were finished, they were exhausted. They didn't eat that much. They didn't have time to do the appetizers, you know, before going inside the ballroom. They we're doing so much picture taking that they forgot all about saying goodbye to the guests. It was so much work for them that they lost track. And by the time the wedding was done, they're like, damn, that was literally 30, 40,000, like done and down the drain. You know, whatever you guys choose, be smart, be responsible. And you know, whatever you guys choose when it comes to your wedding, it's gonna be beautiful. Just make it special between you and your fiance. It's be it's because it's between you two, and you guys deserve to be happy and not stress about anything else. But in the meantime, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. Post your guys' comments down below. If you guys are new, please subscribe to this channel. It means a lot to me that you guys are supporting and to everyone who's been watching from the first day till now on my K1 visa. Thanks you guys. You guys have been so amazing and watching how I'm giving all these updates, my feedback and my vices. And I hope you guys learn from something that can bring it to your folks' uh, K1 visa journey. In the meantime, you guys have a wonderful working week. Stay safe. Stay positive, stay strong. I'm always rooting for you. All guys. right, guys, let's get some 10,000 subscribers to my channel. And till then, saying goodbye. Aloha.